Alright, hello YouTube. Welcome back. Toklan here with another episode of my Mod Minecraft Adventure uh, Let's Play series. So, I did a little fix up of this room. I, I noticed I had too many um, diamond pipe or diamond uh, electrical circuits here from IC2. And uh, these uh, pneumatic tubes weren't uh, extended far enough. And uh, they were in the wrong positioning. So I fixed that up. Not much there. Also, I've been kind of letting my oil and fuel uh, do its thing. Oops. Uh, that's not good. Okay, oil and fuel is now doing its thing. Um, yeah, I've stocked up a little on wood now. That, um, when it was on frequency too, it was actually powering my forestry machine out there, so... I now have uh, quite a bit of wood. And you'll notice that I'm really, 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 really low on um, ores. So I decided that I would go down and mine. And I'm actually out of um, a sword right now. So I'm going to give myself a new sword. Uh, because I will obviously need that at one point. And I'm just going to burn up these zombies because they're annoying. Also, I installed a new mod. It's not very... you don't need it. It's not very interesting. It's just um, extra music discs. And I, I made a skeleton kill a creeper and I got this cat disc. And uh, yeah, diamond dust is from the, this mod. I had to kill a diamond to make the diamond disc in search of diamonds. So let's throw on this disc while... Um, I'm walking around. Um, you'll notice that this song is from one of the more famous Minecraft musician people that uh, make the Minecraft music. music. Woke up this morning on the field. Yeah, that's pretty much what these music discs are. They are from um, music videos for, about Minecraft. Also, my machines have been running for quite a while now, and I've got uh, a dark matter target in all my condensers. And uh, they've been going here for a good uh, two, three hours now. So, yeah, it's like I said, it's not really cheating having those things because the time it takes is way more than what it's worth. And this is one trip mining. I made all of this, or I mined all of this in one trip. So I just used my bag here and I kept collecting and collecting and collecting. And I've gone through a couple stacks of torches here. So, what I wanted to do with this episode was um, show you the some equivalent exchange items, but unfortunately I don't have um, the, the uh, dark matter I need for that. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, show you this room working. And in order to do that I'm going to have to macerate and uh, cook um, a lot of the stuff I've gathered here. and. Um, I'm going to quickly do that off screen and then come back and uh, go over some of the machines I'm going to make with you. And uh, let's see what else do I want to explain before we get on with this episode. Um, yeah, I've just been... The oil has definitely filled up. Oh yeah, last episode I only had like four. I actually went and uh, cooked up a few more um, stacks of glass and made some more tanks. And yeah, like I said, this place is going to get pretty full down there. It's going to be my uh, fuel silo. And uh, that's how I'm going to run it. And uh, yeah, I had rail tracks in there. I found an abandoned mine while I was mining. So that's why. Uh, oh yeah, as you'll notice, my MFE and my MFSU have been gaining quite a bit of power. I haven't... Uh, like I said, I haven't been able to use these machines very much lately due to the fact that um, I'm uh, mostly out of ores. And uh, now that I've finally got some ores, I'll, I'll just do that stuff. So, I guess, yes, it's time I will uh, beer back and then um, you'll see me in a split second and... And uh, we can get on with the episode, so be right back. 
Alright guys, and I finished smelting all my stuff here. As you can see, I got a lot of stuff set out, and um, yeah, I left some dust just in case I want to make more bronze, or if I need to make tin or copper bars later, so I leave some dust usually, just in case. And I've used up most of my refined iron for what I'm going to be using today, but I still have a little bit left, and a few diamonds. And yeah. And uh, yeah, I was doing all that, and these uh, Dark Matter, the next ones, are almost done. Almost, almost, almost. But for now, let's get started with what I'm going to do today. So I might as well start over here, because I don't need any supplies. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some mixed alloy ingots, because I'm going to require those for uh, one of the recipes. So let's get, go ahead and make a couple of these. And by couple, I mean four. And I will compress them right away. Okay, now while those are compressing, I want two machine blocks, which is why I gathered the iron here. Like I said, everything is set up for what I need today. And I also need um, four electrical circuits, or electronic circuits. And four, and eight, and bam. Two of these electrical circuits need to be advanced, so I will go ahead and make these advanced. Okay. And then I need one um, Lapatron crystal, which is the blue um, energy crystal. That requires one energy crystal, two electronic circuits, and six lapis. That makes a Lapatron crystal. Now I need these advanced alloys, and I'm going to make advanced machine blocks. Alright, now I have two advanced machine blocks, a Lapatron crystal, two advanced circuits, and some glowstone dust. Now, Toklan, what are you going to make with this random pile of stuff? Well, the first machine, um, well, this, one of the main machines I need to make um, with this setup, um, which allows me to make one of the um, best armors in the game. And uh, I do that by placing the advanced machine blocks on the right and left, the Leptron crystal in the center, and the advanced circuits in the top and bottom. And then four glowstone dust on the sides. That gives me a mass fabricator. Now this machine is the machine that I was talking about requiring um, scrap. And it requires a high voltage power. Now I don't know if I put a third line here and then maybe I'll just tuck it into my wall right here. And uh, yeah, if I put a third line here maybe it will work proper. So let me go grab a couple of things to fix this up. I'll be right back. Okay, I fixed it up. Now, I'm going to stick that there. And, oh, I don't want to connect that right away. That would be a bad idea. I'm actually missing one more ingredient. So here I was, um, I'm like, yay, I'm all set up and ready for this episode. And it's going to be nice and tidy and clean. And, you know, I didn't do what I had to do. I forgot some of the stuff I had to get set out. But that's okay. So, this thing, as soon as I plug this in, it should start taking in power. Yeah, so as you can hear, it's like uh, doing its own little construction. And it's not taking any energy from my machine, so that means it's working how I want it to. Now, I actually want to hide that lever as well. So, I'm going to stick that in the side here. That way, I can turn the machine on and off just by flicking that switch. And as you can see, it's already got 23 progress, but it's used up quite a bit of the power I had stored. I had over um, a million and a half stored there earlier. So for about 25%, it takes about a million, um, or no, half a million uh, EU. Now, one of the things that this is good for, or for these, the scrap is good for, is if I stick scrap in here and power it on, it's actually going to be amplified. And you know it's amplified when you hear that extra um, tone or music in the background. 
as soon as the amplification is gone, it stops. Um, the amplifier stops there, and it doesn't uh, use up any more scrap because there's no scrap left. But the progress has quickly advanced, and not much EU has been stolen for the extra progress. I'm actually going to let this keep going. Hopefully, I don't use up too much energy here. And yes, now I have one UU matter. Now UU matter can be used to craft stuff if you have enough, and um, different patterns produce uh, different items. Unfortunately with one UU matter I won't be able to build anything. But we can go ahead and check out the kind of stuff you can make with UU matter. So um, I might as well just keep this open and if I go uh, U, which is usage, and it will automatically bring up all the, all the usage recipes I can use with UU Matter. So one UU Matter in the center of my crafting grid, as you can tell it's shaped crafting, so it has to be this way. Uh, one UU Matter, so I can do stuff with UU Matter, one UU Matter is uh, 16 stone. Four UU Matter in a wheel pattern is glass. Two UU Matter on the left bottom side is grass blocks. 3 UU matter in a pyramid shape on the bottom is moss stone. 2 UU matter in a vertical shape on the right side is 16 sandstone. 2 UU matter on the top split is snow. And you know, it keeps going. Lava blocks instead of buckets. Coal, iron, diamonds, uh, gold, redstone, copper, tin, obsidian, lights. Uh, glowstone, netherrack. You'll notice I call it glowstone lightstone is because uh, back when it first came out or people first to start, started discussing it before Notch made the little pop-up things to tell you what blocks are, uh, everybody was calling it lightstone. So a lot of people, a lot of the old players will still be calling it lightstone. I still call it lightstone because it is lightstone. It's not glowstone. It does light up the area for you. <clears throat> And uh, okay, so one more UU matter, so I can still do more things with one UU is wood, lapis, feathers, snowballs, and this is the this is the item I want to be making with UU matter, which is iridium ore. You can't mine this ore; you will never find it by mining ever. You have to make it with UU matter, which requires mass fabrication. So this requires an eye shape in the crafting grid, which is seven UU matter. So as you can tell, that takes a lot of power. Very, very, very lot of power. I only have, uh, I think that said half a million. Yeah, just under half a mil, or just over half a million left. Although I do have six hundred thousand here, this cannot use the MFE's power. It requires MFSU power, and it requires a lot of power. That is also why I put up a lot more um, blocks up there. Now, as this machine is off, it won't be sapping any power. It will just sit there and no power will run through my line. The only power that will run through my line is the power that it requires to keep these machines powered. Now, now that I have that mass fabricator, I can go ahead and start making iridium ore for my... Um, the, the next items that I'm going to be making. For now, I'm going to shove this in my bag because I won't be needing this for a little bit. Um, the next item I'm going to be making requires all this junk down here. So as you know, I have already made advanced machines, so that's why I have these copper plates and advanced alloys. Um, obviously I wasn't smart and I didn't make the advanced or the machine blocks first, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I need four, six advanced machine blocks. So six six, 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 and six. And this iron is for other stuff. So now that I have six advanced machine blocks, I can make my advanced, or six machine blocks, I can make my advanced machine blocks. Now what are you gonna, what am I gonna do with these advanced machine blocks? Well you've already seen me make them up on this line, but I had to make more for my automated machine over there. So since I'm putting in an electric furnace, I want to make induction furnaces, which requires copper. And this is why I had that extra copper down there. 
So now I have three more induction furnaces. The next thing I want to make is rotary macerators, and that requires refined iron instead of copper. So I'll go ahead and I will make these three. Done. And you'll notice I have two levers, because those are required as well. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you this machine right away. Actually, I can. I can go off screen and mine some ores, and then, and then I'll be right back. First, I'll set this up. So what I want to do is I want to stick my macerators right here on this line. So when my sorting machine throws in the items, they'll go directly into this first macerator. If they can't go into this macerator, they'll go into the next, and then the next. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to... Actually, I might just run an extra pipe and then have it have it wrap around and go into the chest possibly maybe um, I'm not sure how that will work but uh, yeah so the next one I want to make is my induction furnaces which go right here yes beautiful that is absolutely beautiful so as you can tell my MFE is quickly using energy to power these machines or well not power them but to have them set there and it is actually using quite a bit of power I think it's actually starting to sap the power for these machines so I'm gonna turn these machines on which should power them up and they should be using the power required to power them and this MFE is gaining power okay and these machines will go up to speed so I will bear back and I'm gonna go grab um, no actually wait I will not do that I will first show you guys the next item I need to make which is for red power and obviously I forgot some stuff in there from when I was making I want to grab one Mobius fuel to power the furnace and I want to throw this away because I don't need this at the moment okay and actually I want to throw this brass away too. As you can see I got a few extra silver now and some more nickelite. So I'm gonna grab all of the stuff that I had in here, all my dyes, and we can get ahead and go and make this stuff. So the first thing I want to show you is the um, tin plates which makes paint cans. So you take your iron ingots and your tin which is uh, two tin per iron ingot I believe which makes eight tin plates so let's see what is uh, maybe it's maybe it's one tin per two iron ingots. yeah one tin per two iron ingots makes uh, four tin plates so that's how it is and then the next thing I want to do is make fourteen paint brushes yes. so in this pattern is paint brushes you cannot place it anywhere else but you can place it anywhere in the crafting grid as long as it's this pattern. So I'm actually going to make all of these paint brushes. Paint brushes aren't used up, but when you place a color in them, they change that color. When the color runs out, they turn back into a normal paint brush. Paint brushes by themselves don't do anything, but when they're made um, with colors, they can paint the pneumatic tubes over there. Now I'm going to make a couple of paint hands which requires seven tin plates in the um, bucket pattern on the crafting grid or well a mine card or boat pattern with extra two on the top or reverse leggings pattern so two paint pans plus two okay one paint can plus two flaxseed plus any color you want um, or is it like that? Okay, yeah, two flaxseed. Um, they can't be stacked. They have to actually be in two different spots. And that makes the color of paint you make. So I'm going to grab um, yellow, blue. I actually won't need this lapis because of that indigo dye makes blue. And I actually ran out of iron there. So I want to go grab a few more iron bars. Uh, bars. And I'll go grab 24 and stick those in there. And uh, give me a second here, guys. All right, so we have a few plates now. 
and I'll make a uh, I don't think I can make five no I definitely do not have enough for five but I will in one second haha -ha. five okay that's five more paint cans I can split my set flax seeds up I want to make some red paint some black paint some orange paint some green paint and some brown paint alright now that I got all this paint I'm actually gonna grab yeah whatever I'll just make some more tin doesn't matter one more paint can just for white white alright now I have a bunch of paint so to make paint brushes you take one unused paintbrush and one of any paint and it creates one paintbrush now you'll notice that each time you use that paint uh, the durability of the paint bucket will go down eventually you use you'll use up your paint and you'll have to make a new color with flaxseed and the color fortunately that will be quite a while before I use that much paint Actually, I don't think I'll ever use that much paint. However, the paint brushes I might use quite a bit of. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make all these paint brushes. So, beer right back. All right. So I made all the paint brushes. So this chest, which is my receiving chest, as you guys noticed. Uh, sorry, heavy breath there. Um, the last episode I made um, the big long tube that ends up right here which is where I will receive any items that uh, that machines puts out so I'm gonna actually set this to um, let's set it to blue so this chest any items that go to this chest will need to be blue now I need to make sure that when I set out items actually I want to grab one more item before I head over here uh, which I already had it over there, so yeah, whatever. Um, I want to grab some more pneumatic tubes. I like to add the P sound in there, so pneumatics tubes. If you hear me say that and you get mad at me, well, I'm sorry guys, but sometimes that's how I pronounce stuff. Oopsie daisy, went a little bit too deep there, and yes, this drill is sometimes way too powerful for its own good. So just shove some dirt back in there. I want to drop that and put that there and then I want to cover that back up with the marble now the reason I did that is so I can set any items that I don't want or that this machine doesn't know what to do with and it'll throw them way over there to that chest so if I accidentally throw in some diamonds which it won't do anything with over here it'll send it all over to that chest now I gotta find blue yes that's blue okay so I'm gonna make sure that no items that come out of here um, go down that tube unless they're blue by setting that to blue I'm actually gonna also set this one to blue so that way any items that come out of the, or wanna come out of this macerator need to be um, the right color so all the items that are blue um, will automatically Send, be sent down this tube and go to the left and up there. The next thing I want to do is set any items that come out of... Actually, I already did that up there, I believe. Yes. I actually don't want this there. Just for that reason. So they don't have to be sent all the way around like that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to send... Um, items that I want instantly um, cooked instead of macerated up this tube to the right and down into the macerator side so I'm gonna set orange to do that so all these pipes here can be colored orange you don't necessarily have to color every single pipe in that direction the color but I like to do that because it keeps it kind of even I don't really need to do that down there because nobody can see that but you can see this stuff so it makes it nice if you color it as you also notice the orange paintbrush has quickly depleted now 
when I go into the sorting machine, there's a bunch of buttons here that you have absolutely no idea what to do with. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set um, this second line here um, into orange. So you can right and left click to select colors. Um, left click goes uh, forward, I believe, and right click goes backwards. So my orange line will automatically smelt anything that uh, I put in this chest and it sees that wants to be smelted. So I can obviously move my cobblestone back and forth between my orange line and whatever line I'm going to color for macerating. That way I can move cobblestone into the macerator to turn into sand, which can then turn into glass. But sometimes I just want it as smooth stone, so I'll leave it in the orange column for now. The next one I want is macerating. So every item I want macerated I can set to um, green. Let's have green here. So all green items are set for macerating. Now as you notice I have left this tube blank. That is because it has a split and I'll, if I want to have a split I can't have colors interrupting that split. If I have a color interrupting that split like red right here no items will be able to find their way through. It's not that smart to send it through a different color as a zone and then pick out the color that it needs to go to. I'm going to leave this color blank because that is just the retriever. Uh, this retriever, all it does is it sucks the items out of this socket as long as they're, this retriever is retrieving out of the side of the machine. Now, the retriever I want to send to, um, yes, back, I want to send back down to orange. Which is this entire, ah, now as you can see I broke my paintbrush and it returned into a normal paintbrush. And obviously I couldn't finish this line. Uh, but that's okay. So all I have to do to fix that is just add another couple of orange. But that's uh, not broken. I've already added one color right here. That's all it needed was this one orange. And then so anything that comes out of this, which will be orange, wherever that is. Come here, orange. There you are. Shoot, I should have just left clicked twice. Um anything that comes out of here will be orange and it will go into the induction furnace. Of course I have to set what re it retrieves but I'll do that in a bit. Um, this one needs to be blue so I will quickly set this to blue and anything it sucks out of the induction furnaces will automatically be uh, thrown over here into my chest over there. Now I'll be right back and I'm going to go grab a few ores so I can show you exactly how this runs. So yes, uh, give me one second guys. Alright, I'm back. So got a few things from my mining trip and you know I think I'm feeling pretty good about this. Now what I want to do is I want to set these things back down to so they, they work kind of fast. I don't want them to be slow. And uh, if you get annoyed by the ticks, I'm sorry guys, but that's uh, how this machine runs. Runs by ticks. Probably set up some sort of redstone circuitry instead of these things. But um, these things are so much more compact that it makes it that much easier. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that all my ores that I want macerated go green. So... I'm going to set this to, no, that's light green, or lime, this one, green, okay. So I want, obviously I want tin ore, silver ore, and the other type of tin ore, so both types of tin ore, as well as both types of copper ore, and silver ore. So that's all my... Um, mod ores and then all my regular ore which is gold and iron and then 
that's going to be instant smelt which is the orange line and I want uh, some sand in there but I don't have some sand at the moment however I can stick a piece of cobble in here and oh, just gonna grab my sand and send it over to the orange already and maybe I can grab that before it smelts it there we go okay perfect so and I want sand to be instant smelted so as you can see it's automatically pulling out sand even though I haven't told it to yet but I want to make sure that it does so I will macerate one more piece of sand and grab that quickly yes awesome and I'll stick sand in here now I also want to stick the dusts in here so I'll quickly make some dust so I'll be back okay so I got my dusts and I got some ingots too so this one I want to retrieve silver tin copper iron and gold dust okay so yes I think that's all the dusts I need at the moment I'm probably forgetting some stuff that I want it to retrieve at later points uh, but for now it's good and this one I want to retrieve gold copper tin silver and iron I also want it to retrieve sorry big breath there again guys um, me and my bad breath I want it to retrieve stone glass and smooth basalt so I'm gonna quickly run over here and grab it okay and I got some so stick these three in there and yes it should retrieve all of that out of the induction furnaces okay so let's test this I'm gonna throw um, let's just shove this up on a high timer for now so I can shove some stuff in the chest uh, iron silver tin cobble um, this tin both types of copper and some gold yes that's fine for now I don't have anything else I want to shove in my bag um, as for stuff it doesn't know what to do with I'll shove some appetite uranium a piece of ruby that some coal nickelite um, marble uh, redstone okay so it already took something out of my oops so green it sent all the dust that it already made out to orange uh, it's gonna sm uh, macerate my ores that it's sending to the macerators and yes it's sending all of the and it, yes it's smelt at the cobblestone because that's how I had it I set it to instant smelt and it's pulling out all the ores that I want it to pull out yep so everything's working perfectly as it should yes even all the stuff that I Ah, oh, they patched it. Yes, I um I upgraded a while ago. Um, so it pulls out stacks when it doesn't know what to do with it. It will pull out a stack of whatever it wants. Huh, nifty. So instead of uh, pulling out one by one, it actually pulls out a stack. And there's an Enderman inside my house. Get out of here. He won't be coming back anytime soon. So now that everything is being sent over to this chest right here, I should quickly see that everything is slowly, you know, ending up in this chest. Yes, all the tungsten, that sapphire, all the coal I sent, all the bars that I smelted. So quickly, everything is sent over here, and I can grab everything that I've mined from that uh, previous trip and then I can throw it into my chests over here because these chests will be um, I'll have uh, some more tubing um, over here at later points um, 
for other stuff. Uh, but for now, this is how it's going to work, and it's working out quite fine. I think uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to build a basement under this area here, um, so I can have some more automated, automated stuff right underground here. And uh, pretty much the underground here is going to be my automation room, and I don't really want it to look pretty because I don't plan on being down there a lot. Most of my time is going to be spent up here or outside. So I think that's a good wrapping up point for uh, this episode, guys, because, yes, I've done quite a bit. Oh, actually, I should have five dark matter. Oh. Only four. Um, and I don't think I can make anything with the four dark matter yet. The plan was, is that I wanted to make a that, but this first. Which requires... Um, oh, that, that one's actually kind of easy. Maybe I should make that one. Oops. No, I don't want that. Uh, usage back over to page. Yes, that requires seven. Okay, you know what? The first thing I want to make is a um, hyperkinetic lens and a destruction catalyst. So the on the only thing I want the lens for is for when I want to make the catalytic lens. And that requires two dark matter for the hyperkinetic lens, and then seven for the catalytic lens. So nine in all. And a Nova Catalyst requires four Mobius fuel, one TNT, one glowstone, and one sandstone. And I actually don't have enough of the materials gathered at the moment, so I'm going to quickly gather that off screen and make this for you. That way, um, for the start of the next episode, I can demonstrate on how it's used, used, and you guys can look forward to that. So I'll be right back right fast, and I'm going to gather all the materials I need. Alright guys, back. And uh, I got what I need. So, 5 TNT, 5 sandstone, 5 glowstone, and uh, 4 Mobius fuel and that makes a catalytic or er, nova catalyst so four mobius fuel uh, one flint and steel and four nova catalysts in this pattern equals a destruction catalyst now how oh, that's an awesome weapon and then my two dark matter my nova catalyst and my six diamond equals a hyperkinetic lens. Now, I actually want to show you guys right away what this stuff does, um, but this episode is quite long now, and I want to end it. So the next episode, you can look forward to me showing off these two EE items, or equivalent exchange items. So I've done quite a bit of this episode. I made my mass fabricator, one UU, and I showed you the um, usage of my sorting, um, smelting, automated uh, machine. So as you can see I got all my stuff here. I threw the rest of my stuff in my inventory into the machine and it automatically smelted what I had. So yes, pretty good. I also actually want to take one more iron ingot right before I uh, end this episode. And I want to stick iron into the orange line. That way, um, if I ever want refined iron, I can just stick a couple stacks in there of iron in there, and it'll automatically smelt it into uh, refined iron. And I actually want to take one more iron and, or one refined iron, and put it in there to make sure it sucks out the refined iron. And as you can see, that one will be completely full. Hopefully, I don't have anything else I want to smelt. And uh, I also wanted to show you guys my fuel silo here getting quite full. I have a lot of fuel. A lot. So I'm actually thinking I might extend this wall here at this wall here and make um, a couple more um, power units. 
that way I can uh, quickly switch back and forth to um, the power units I need to power and uh, I can power multiple things at once right now um, basically I can only power one um, uh, area at once so I can only power my refinery or my forestry my machine uh, next up is I'm gonna build a query probably and uh, I'm gonna need at least one of these units um, to power that at all times otherwise uh, I won't be able to power it so that is this episode and I'm going to end it now guys and uh, thanks for watching I hope you're having uh, fun watching me build this stuff and uh, I plan to continue this for quite a while there should be at least a hundred episodes with all these mods in here so this is Toe Clan signing out guys goodbye <laughs>